The views and opinions expressed by the following program and its participants are solely their current opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Bobo 89.1 FM and DMS Broadcasting respective stations. The program participants' opinions are based upon information they consider reliable and based on their knowledge. Shelby the Turtle here at the Cayman Turtle Center. Did you know that turtles breathe air just like people, but we can hold our breath a lot longer than our human friends between four and seven hours underwater? Come and visit me. I'm the largest turtle at the center, weighing in at 585 pounds. Visit the Cayman Turtle Center and explore Shelby and her friends. Looking for something fun and different to do with the family? Join us at the Cayman Turtle Center for Grill and Chill Saturdays. Every Saturday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., enjoy a poolside barbecue, buckets of beer and daiquiri specials, and a live DJ. It's Grill and chill Saturdays at Cayman Turtle Center. Good morning, listeners, and welcome to The Green Scene. I'm Wendy Dandy, and I'm one of the Education Programs Officers at the Cayman Turtle Center. Today, we're bringing to you a brand new episode. We're on our second season of our talk show, and we hope that you'll tune in every Saturday at 11 a.m. here on Bobo 89.1 FM as we talk about conservation, wildlife, the environment, culture, and much more. In each episode, we'll be exploring topics related to conservation here in the Cayman Islands, including protecting our natural environment, preserving our culture and heritage, as well as talking about sea turtles and other native species. Last Saturday, we spoke about conservation is everybody's business, and we spoke about different ways that the environment is being um, exploited and how we can help remediate those effects. This week, we will be talking about CTC past and present. And when I say CTC, I mean the Cayman Turtle Center. So today is all about talking about, as the pe- as people would say, the good old days um, from when you were a Cayman Turtle Farm, we're actually all the way back from when we were first Mariculture Limited up until today and how much we've evolved over the time. This episode will be taking out the time to speak to some of our long existing crew members who were there from many years ago and we speak to them and interview and ask them about how the times have changed and their memorable experiences from that era. So stay tuned with us. We'll be back after these messages and we'll get into our first interview. You're listening to The Green Scene on Bobo 89.1 FM. Shelby the Turtle here at the Cayman Turtle Center. Did you know that turtles breathe air just like people, but we can hold our breath a lot longer than our human friends between four and seven hours underwater. Come and visit me. I'm the largest turtle at the center, weighing in at 585 pounds. Visit the Cayman Turtle Center and explore Shelby and her friends. Green sea turtle nesting season's approaching. Here's a few tips to keeping our friends safe. Turn off, redirect, or shield any lights that can be seen from the beach. Remove obstacles and litter from the beach. No bonfires on the beach and remain quiet and distant if you see a nesting turtle. This message from the Cayman Turtle Center. Looking for something fun and different to do with the family? Join us at the Cayman Turtle Center for Grill and Chill Saturdays. Every Saturday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., enjoy a poolside barbecue, buckets of beer and daiquiri specials, and a live DJ. It's Grill and Chill Saturdays at Cayman Turtle Center. This week's episode is about CTC past and present. So I'm talking about Cayman Turtle Farm and Mar Culture Limited. And with me in studio today, I have Mr. Geddes Hislop, the curator of terrestrial exhibits and education programs at the Cayman Turtle Center. Good morning, Geddes. Hi, Wendy. And Geddes will be speaking with me today and we will be going over uh, the past, as I said. So it will be a very interesting show. We interviewed quite a few long-standing crew members that we have at the center and they've given us some great stories and a gold mine of um, information about what it was like 20 plus years ago compared to now. So Geddes, do you have any input on that? Well, yeah, well... Oh, thanks for coming on, Wendy. Uh, what we're going to do, what we should do probably is part, kind of set the tone, give people a little background into the center. I think some people might have, well, definitely some of the older Caymanians will know some of the history. But just so people know, the Cayman Turtle Center, we are celebrating 55 years in existence, started in 1968 as a privately owned company called Mariculture Limited. And it was, a, it was foreign owned, they were foreign investors, and I suppose local, local counterparts. And they started way back as a sea turtle breeding commercial sea turtle farm the breed turtles basically to sell the meat and the turtle products and some people may think remember things like uh, turtle wax and and uh, turtle well turtles that, that's this, I guess they show the meat and the shell and so on they started in Salt Creek in West Bay which is now I think where the Yacht Club is in West Bay and later on moved over to the Boston Bay what they call the Goat Rock area and that that's where it went became uh they i think they the cayman Isles government bought them out in in 1983 i believe and renamed mariculture limited into cayman turtle farm that most people know it today and then over the years it's gone through a, a few other iterations 
And today it's the Cayman Turtle Conservation and Education Center. But today I know that people have a problem getting that name, wrapping that name around. So they still call it Cayman Turtle Farm. You still hear that a lot. But it's, it's evolved quite a lot since then. Yeah, it has evolved tremendously since then. Yeah. And you remember, you said you were interviewing some of the oldest, some of the long-standing employees here. Uh, like, who did you interview? Yes, I did interview quite a few um, long-standing crew members. And so we can jump straight into it. I have an interview here with Mr. Benny Ebanks, who is one of our longtime tour guides. So if you listen to this clip here, we can get our show rolling. Okay, guys, I'm here with Mr. Benny Ebanks from the Cayman Turtle Center, one of our original staff members. So good morning, Mr. Benny. Thank you for joining us today on The Green Scene. And I just have a few questions for you that I'd love for you to answer. So if you could start with telling me what you do here and what year you started. Well, uh, good afternoon. Good morning. I'm the tour supervisor and I started here in 1986. Um, there's a difference right now. Okay, 86. So that's how many years? Now, 37 going 38. Yeah. All right. That's a good amount of time. So you definitely know the ins and out of the center. So what was it like when you first started working here? Well, it definitely has a big difference now. Uh, we only had something like 25 staff members at that time when I first started. And most of all of them was way older than me. I started off as a rookie and I got a lot of my training from a lot of older Caymanian folks. All right, so the rookie became the master. So you were on the opposite side of the road that came on back then came on Turtle Farm, right? That's what I was used to as a kid. Yes, right. So you had Sparky and all those original turtles from back then, yeah? Yes, we did. We had Sparky from then too, yeah. It was first started back in 1968. And Sparky is one of the original breeders are still here with us. All right, so could you tell me some memorable experiences about working at the old CTF? Uh, some memorable ones now. There was, uh, we had a few hurricanes over there that did some damage over there. Then plus, we were successful to actually breed the Camp Ridley's here in captivity. Originally, the, the camps are not from here, but we were successful here to breed the Camp Ridley's. All right, tell the camps, that's actually a really interesting story. So from what I understand, the Camp Ridley is the most endangered sea turtle of the seven species. Do you remember about when it was that you brought them here to Cayman? I can't remember exactly the, 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 the date and the year, but um, we did bring them here because we had a former uh, managing director, Dr. Jim Wood. He was originally from Texas, and uh, he brought them over from there. And then we was uh, successful, like I said to get them to reproduce, and we sent 110, 110 back in 1999 back to Mexico. That's amazing, right, because they're only found around the Gulf of Mexico. That's amazing. You mentioned quite a few storms you've been through, Michelle, Ivan. Um, is there any particular inc uh, incidences that stick out that you'll never forget? I'm sure there's a few. Well, Michelle in particular. i never forget Michelle. I... Uh, Almost lost my life then, but I'm sorry to say, but yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I was swept and hit by a wave. It told me a good distance, and I was, uh, thank God I had enough sense left in me that I could grab onto the fence and hold on, but she doesn't take, the waves won't take me back out. That's, cr Benny, that's crazy. Why am I just knowing about this? Is that during the day or the night time? That was in the day. That was in the day with Michelle. Yeah, it was Michelle. She passed across. Yep. Wow, you have really been through some things at these centers. So you nearly got washed away. Did any of the turtles get washed away? Yeah, a few of those turtles got washed away, but we managed to save a lot of them too, though, including Sparky. Wow, well, Benny, I'd just like to thank you more than me already do on the regular basis for really p literally putting your life on the line for this job. Um, you're one of our national treasures at the center, as you know. Whenever we have any of our um, most... Uh, important visitors Benny is the guy who we always put on to show them the tour so we usually talk Benny on how the center has evolved so much um, from just being the Cayman Turtle Farm to today being the Cayman Turtle Conservation Education Center right so what would you say are some of the biggest differences between CTF then and CTC today well everything is different than from back then things you could do over there you can't do over here so there's a difference in such between. As, right. Well, <laughs> such as having fun with turtles and so on, like, you know, in the breeding pond when they come to pond survey and stuff. And then you could actually hold on to them. And if you wanted to ride, you could do it, but you can't do it over here, you know, okay. I can imagine. 
All right. Is there anything else you want to share about your time, all the years you've been at the center? Well, I would like to mention some uh, some old-time staff members that I work with. Some have passed on, but I want to give kudos to all those guys that helped me to reach where I am right now. You got um, you got Miss Diana Ebanks, Mr. Eford Ebanks, Miss Vanita Ebanks, Truman Solomon, God rest his soul, Mr. Sheridan, Mr. Coleman, Mr. Rowling. There's a lot of those. Sorry if I didn't mention all of them, but yeah, those are the ones that. All right. Well, I hope those people are listening are family members of those special mentions just now. And just one last question before you go. What about the difference in breeding? Do you see a difference in the number of turtles? Or are we pretty much kept a steady amount coming across over the years? Well, it, it can up and down. It goes up and down. But uh, over there, I think we had more of a breeding uh, pop, um, population over there. All because right. It's most natural. Over there, we're more natural. Got it. All right, Benny. Well, thank you for your time and thank you for a quick and brief look into what it was like working at Turtle Center. Mr. Benny started with us in 1986 and still is with us up to today to 2024. So thank you, Benny, and have a great day. Okay, so that was Benny Ebanks, one of our long standing crew members of the Cayman Turtle Center. <laughs> wow, he's been there 37 years plus. That's a long time. <laughs> oh. And that was some, some interesting stuff he's been, he went through there. I mean, Hurricane Michelle was obviously a, a big factor the Turtle Center because I think I remembered when that thing hit and seeing turtles in the road. And in my mind, I remember seeing little boys riding on the road with holding turtles, <laughs> riding, staring at one hand and holding a bunch of turtles and, and the fins in the other. <laughs> right. And, and, and gee, and Benny almost lost his life in that thing. Crazy. That's crazy. crazy. Yeah, yeah, but interesting. He he mentioned the Kemp's Ridley's. I don't know how many people remember that we actually had another species there at the Tilt Center in that program. And that was significant because if I remember recall right, that was a joint program between U.S. Fish and Wildlife and the Cayman Tilt Center because they were trying to breed them in captivity in the U.S. and they couldn't. They couldn't figure it out. And somehow little Cayman figured out how to deal, how to breed the most endangered sea turtle in the world. The first time they were ever bred in captivity as well, yeah. successfully. Mm -hmm. And they managed to return some. As far as I know, now the Kemp's are doing a lot better because I, I hear about them breeding even on the Atlantic coast of, coming up on the Atlantic coast of Florida. So they're, they're doing a lot better these days compared to when the, that program was going on. So Cayman, Cayman again, little Cayman had a, a, such a significant contribution to the to the conservation of a, of a highly endangered species like that. Oh, well, that was really interesting. Very. All right. Well, we're going to take a break and we'll be back after this messages with more interviews from past uh, crew members. And it's going to get a lot more detailed and exciting. So stay tuned. You're tuned into the green scene brought to you by the Cayman Turtle Center on Bobo 89.1 FM. Shelby, the turtle here at the Cayman Turtle Center. Did you know that turtles breathe air just like people, but we can hold our breath a lot longer than our human friends between four and seven hours underwater. Come and visit me. I'm the largest turtle at the center, weighing in at 585 pounds. Visit the Cayman Turtle Center and explore Shelby and her friends. Green sea turtle nesting season's approaching. Here's a few tips to keeping our friends safe. Turn off, redirect, or shield any lights that can be seen from the beach. Remove obstacles and litter from the beach. No bonfires on the beach and remain quiet and distant if you see a nesting turtle. This message from the Cayman Turtle Center. Looking for something fun and different to do with the family? Join us at the Cayman Turtle Center for grill and chill Saturdays. Every Saturday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Enjoy a poolside barbecue, buckets of beer and daiquiri specials, and a live DJ. It's grill and chill Saturdays at Cayman Turtle Center. All right, listeners, welcome back to The Green Scene, brought to you by the Cayman Turtle Center. Today I'm in studio with Mr. Geddes Hislop, uh, the curator of terrestrial exhibits at the Turtle Center. And we are talking today about CTC past and present. So we've been taking it back even further than Cayman Turtle Farm, all the way back to Mar Culture Limited. And we've been comparing and uh, the differences and also speaking mostly to long existing crew members um, to tell us their experiences of the center before and after and just basically compare to how much it has evolved since then. So our next guest we're going to get right into is Mr. Joe Parsons. And Mr. Joe Parsons is a past executive um, from Meyer Culture Limited Days. He was there, I believe he started in the 70s, and he was a chief scientific officer. So we're just going to get right into it and I hope you guys enjoy his message. 
I am here with Mr. Joe Parsons this morning. Good morning, Joe. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right. So as you know, we have our episode today talking about uh, Turtle Farms past and Cayman Turtle Center's present. So we've been talking to a lot of uh, long with us crew members and Mr. Parsons himself is definitely an alumni of the center. So Mr. Parsons, if you don't mind introducing yourself and telling us when and where you were. Well, I'm Joe Parsons, and I, I started working part-time at uh, Mariculture Limited back in 1970, and then went to work with them full-time then in 72. So all in all, I've got in 23 years full-time, but a whole lot of time associated with them. That's a whole lot of time, and you were there from the beginning, the inception as well, Mariculture. Yeah, two years later, pretty much the inception. So tell us about it, Joe. What were your positions when you were there? Well, I you know, started feeding turtles and uh, just general labor and moving feed and, and uh, stuff. So, you know, it, it was a progression up from uh, taking care of turtles to later on, then I became a research assistant. And that's where I got interested in the whole idea of, of uh, you know, going on for a career in it. Okay, so you went off to study then? Yes. And what did you study, if you don't mind me asking? Biology, biology with a marine emphasis. Awesome, another biologist in the house. <laughs> I studied biology as well. Okay, so is there, could you tell me more about what it was like working at Mariculture Limited at the time? Well, at that time, uh, the, the, the greatest number of turtles were uh, small turtles. Uh, I can't say exactly what, what size, but most of them were at Salt Creek at that time. So we started at Salt Creek and for the first couple of years, and then they started building the facility at uh, uh, Goat Rock um, down in, uh, in uh, Bixville area to expand and, and get the breeding herd there. So they built the pond and, and a lot of the um, on-land um, turtle tanks because it as it got bigger, it was uh, more difficult to keep them in floating pens in Salt Creek. So they, they changed the location and gradually. Okay, so you were for the, you were for the change of that as well. All right, so what, what was it like once you move over to that site? Um, I guess that was much different because you said you needed expansion. Um, what could you tell me about working at the first turtle farm in Norwest, what we call Norwest Point, the general? Yeah, well, uh, everything was centered around the... the breeding pond on the on the seaside and uh, the stock turtles then the smaller turtles were across the road but uh, hatchlings were on the seaside and over the years I guess uh, we were lucky that we didn't get devastated earlier than we did but uh, certainly 89 that was the first major northwester that I can remember Christmas Eve of 89 and uh, Luckily, we had moved the breeders out at that time, uh, doing repairs in the in the breeding pond, so they didn't wash away. But a whole lot of younger turtles uh, were washed away at that time. Wow. Okay, that was a, a really serious time, and multiple crew members have brought up um, that hurricane. So I can imagine. Wow. So can you tell us more about those disasters and what it was like? Because we haven't had any serious weather um, or storms since I've been coming up on 20 years. So what was that like? Yeah, that uh, hurricane, uh, tropical storm, Michelle, was uh, not, not, a, not classified as a hurricane, even as far as I remember, until later. And uh, that was the major disaster and uh, caused the... the you know the changes that has taken place in the last couple of years. In 2002, um, we lost most of our breeders and a, a large portion of the turtles that were on the seaside of the road. And what storm was in 2002? Oh, that's that? Michelle. Yeah, Michelle. Yeah. Okay. All right. So from those storms, I guess you feared Hurricane Ivan a lot better, which came uh, about two years later. And because you had moved the stock to the other side of the road, you learned um, from experience. Yeah, that, that, that uh, I guess, was it. What determined the move was uh, Ivan. And, and at that time, the uh, board and, and, I guess, government uh, uh, members decided it was time to change things. So it, instead of just moving the breeders across the street, then it, it grew and grew. So it would not become a 
a, a major attraction instead of just a, a turtle center. Yeah, it has evolved a, a lot over the years um, to be what it is today. All right, Mr. Parsons, so what else can you tell me? I'd love to know uh, what are some of your most memorable moments throughout the years uh, working for um, the turtle conservation? Well, um, as a young boy starting at, at the farm back in the uh, 72, got a chance to go off to Costa Rica to collect eggs. And then in early 73, went to Ascension Islands. So that was a memorable, too memorable. Wow, you went to Ascension Island. So for those listening, um, in Ascension Island is a very important island to the Cayman Turtle Farm, um, Turtle Center. It's where one of the islands where we got one of our original breeder stocks. And it is very important to the genetic diversity mm -hmm. it adds to our stock as well. Because Ascension Island is a very small, uh, isolated island um, off the east coast of Venezuela, out in the middle of the ocean. And it has a very isolated population of green sea turtles there. So all of the turtles that we've gotten from there has upped our genetic diversity many times full by adding them to the other turtles that we got around the Caribbean. So I say all that to say this, wow, Mr. Parsons, I did not know you went to Ascension Island. What was that like? And what does it take to get to Ascension Island? Because I think now even in 2024, that will be quite a trek to get there. It, it, it took quite a, an organization and, and I have to say that uh, it, it shows how well organized the, uh, the farm were and the, the connections they had. So we were able to go from Cayman to Miami, got our supplies together in a U-Haul truck and continued on to Cape Canaveral where we boarded a U.S. Air Force um, transport plane that took us to Antigua. We had mechanical problems there, so we stayed there a couple of days and then continued on to um, Ascension. Now, that was a long flight. <laughs> It sounds like a National Geographic excursion. That is really awesome. All right. Well, that is definitely memorable. I'll remember that um, forever. Um, very cool, Mr. Parsons. So what else can you tell me? What other memorable experiences? Well, certainly um, the, the, that, that was a personal, personal but uh, scientifically, I'd say the, the um, first nesting in captivity um, in, in 73. So we had the opportunity to see and collect eggs right on our own beach. So that was some uh, experience and, and accomplishment. Awesome, you're here for the first generation that hatched as well. That is amazing. Being there for the first generation is quite a significant stamp on uh, Cayman Turtle Farm, Cayman Turtle Center's history overall. That's another really big moment that I'm a little jealous of as well. That's absolutely amazing. I can't imagine how ecstatic you guys were to see all that hard work had paid off. And you guys were, you know, after trial, I'm sure some trial and error, perfecting how to go about raising these animals. And not only that, we, we managed to go on to achieve second generation after that. Some, I think it was in about 80, 83. Those turtles then mm -hmm. that had hatched um, in around 72 went on to then reproduce in 73. So that was another major accomplishment and, and um, it make us, made us become a fully a farm operation where we were self-sufficient and could raise uh, all of our turtles from captive stock then. That's amazing. So <laughs> I'm noticing um, the years with the difference, which is still uh, kind of the case today. Uh, just to inform the public, generally, the wild populations of the green sea turtle, they take quite a while to get to sexual maturity, to be able to reproduce, generally 20 to 25 years. But at the center, um, we found that they will reproduce much earlier because of having a much better diet and less stress and no parasites. And so with all that reduced stress on life, then they're able to produce better. So what do you have to say about that? Do you have any stories or memorable thoughts about that? Yeah, yeah and that just r reminded me that there was another accomplishment. The first nesting, uh, wild nesting of turtles that had been released from the farm. And uh, I didn't want to forget that. That was in 2002. So some of the turtles that we had been releasing over the years 
came back and nested on Seven Mile Beach, or one of the turtles that we saw that time. Anyway, and if I'm not mistaken, that turtle was either 18 or 19 years old. Now, that's the first nest that we'd seen, but of course, it might have nested before that or not, and there may have been other nesting, but uh, when we saw that, a clear white spot on the um, turtle shell that had been transferred as a hatchling from the belly shell, and uh, that was ecstatic. Wow, so what he's referring to, um, listeners, is what we call a living tag. So back then, that was a very ingenuitive way of how they tagged the turtles instead of satellite tags where they transfer some of the skin on the stomach and graft it onto the shell where it grew. And they put it on a certain scoot. And when that turtle comes up, a scoot is the different sections of the shell by the way. They put it on a scoot. And when the turtle comes up, they would see that and they could tell. So that was a living tag. So that's quite awesome. And you mentioned as well that that was in 2002. And you weren't sure if it's the first year, but due to recent research that the center has done, I believe in 2019, we completed a study joined with the DOE, University of Exeter, I believe the Darwin Initiative and a few other organizations, and they tested the DNA of the wild population, nesting population. And it came back um, that 90% of them were directly related to the center. At first it was 50%, which were ecstatic, but 90% blew us out of the water. And I believe it was about 76% in the other islands, in the sister islands, sorry. And you say in 2002, um, I remember looking at the study because DOE, who deals with the wild population um, excellently as well, they have records of all of the turtle nests that they go and look for each summer. And in 1999, there was only one and then the correlation steadily moves up. So that also is a presentation we do, guys. Sorry, just another plug in there called How Many Came Home. And that is one of our at top presentations that you've heard us talk about in other um, episodes. So anyway, it's an upward trend since 1999. And as usual, I'm very long winded sometimes. I say all of this to say 2002, quite possibly, Mr. Parsons, that was the first time you guys saw your baby come back to have um, eggs on the beach. It's fascinating what you guys have done over the years. And I'm just so proud of everything. Yes, the, the, the first proof. Uh, there were lots of doubts before that because we'd never had a, a mature turtle. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's a lot of criticism sometimes, mm -hmm. but uh, I guess that kind of proved it. And, and over the years, when you get 90% related to the turtles and uh, that's been released, that is no doubt proof. No doubt. And it's people like you that laid the foundation for the future of green sea turtles. So <laughs> I'd like to thank you on behalf of not just the center came on really, because that is our icon <laughs> into the green sea turtle. And um, for all of the other people who've put in over the years, well, Mr. Parsons, thank you so much. We've been a wealth of knowledge and thank you for taking the time. Are there any last remarks you'd like to get up? No, but uh, thanks a lot uh, for having me. All right, guys, stay tuned and we'll be back after these messages. You're listening to The Green Scene on Bobo 89.1 FM. Shelby, the turtle here at the Cayman Turtle Center. Did you know that turtles breathe air just like people, but we can hold our breath a lot longer than our human friends between four and seven hours underwater. Come and visit me. I'm the largest turtle at the center, weighing in at 585 pounds. Visit the Cayman Turtle Center and explore Shelby and her friends. Green sea turtle nesting season's approaching. Here's a few tips to keeping our friends safe. Turn off, redirect, or shield any lights that can be seen from the beach. Remove obstacles and litter from the beach. No bonfires on the beach and remain quiet and distant if you see a nesting turtle. This message from the Cayman Turtle Center. Looking for something fun and different to do with the family? Join us at the Cayman Turtle Center for Grill and Chill Saturdays. Every Saturday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., enjoy a poolside barbecue, buckets of beer and daiquiri specials, and a live DJ. It's Grill and Chill Saturdays at Cayman Turtle Center. Okay, welcome back listeners of The Green Scene. It's Wendy Dandy here from the Cayman Turtle Center. Tuned in with you this morning on Bobo 89.1 FM. And I'm joined in studio with Mr. Geddes Hislop. Say hi, Geddes. Hey, hi, guys. <laughs> Hello, listeners. All right, so we're just getting back from commercial break. Our last segment, we had a informationally rich inter interview, I'm sorry, interview with Mr. Joe Parsons. Now, that, that was an that interview. Was, that was really interesting. Uh, Joe covered quite a lot. He did. I learned so much from him. That's definitely, you know, probably my favorite interview out of the lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's been there for quite a while from the from the from the inception when they were collecting. When he talked about collecting eggs in Costa Rica, 
you know yeah and 72 that, yeah and i'm taking them into salt creek i think i learned a few things that i didn't know before like for example well yeah for one they collected eggs and two when they started salt creek they didn't necessarily have breeders because i thought salt creek was you know big turtles yeah that's what i initially yeah, I thought as well yeah those those are all the little guys and it's quite a few accomplishments because when you think about it when you look back at the past i don't think people realize what a significant accomplishment this is uh, scientifically so the first place that they've bred sea turtles in captivity was here in little cayman i mean when i say little cayman i mean the, the cayman islands mm-hmm. it's the little spot in the middle of the, in the middle of the caribbean you know, they didn't do it in america they didn't do it in australia right here that, that's quite a significant atre- achievement you know? and uh he also talked about because in the earlier episode we talked about when we talked with uh, Benny Ebanks, you know, they, and both Benny and Joe mentioned Hurricane Michelle, Michelle. in two thousand two. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. seems like a lot of PTSD from Michelle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it seems like <laughs> it's interesting impact. to learn. That's why we're on the opposite side of the road. Wise choices about two going on three weeks ago we just had that nor'wester hit us oh yeah it engulfed the whole parking lot and luckily <laughs> the other side is perfectly safe and sound you know a lot of salt spray which is the whole island so michelle definitely that slap on the wrist was what we needed to yeah. get it right yeah, I, yeah that was that was significant you know, like i said i remember michelle with all those little seeing little kids riding up northwest point northwest northwest road point road you know, riding, holding the handlebars with one hand and the other hand, they got, they have baby <laughs> turtles, <laughs> collecting turtles out of the road and carrying them back to the, to the farm. Yeah, to the back. community help from what yeah, Benny community. said. Right, so. yeah. Wow, That's amazing. And uh, you also mentioned uh, that journey to Ascension Island. Ascension Island. Yeah, like, I don't know if people realize, Ascension Island is just a volcanic island out in the middle of the Pacific, of the, of the South Atlantic, off the coast of Brazil. Yes, um, listeners, I did say off the coast of, did I say Venezuela? Venezuela? I apologize, it's Brazil. I knew that, but I just blanked. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's way up there. And you didn't just go to Ascension Island. I, mean, I think it's a military base and all that yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. Those guys are pretty well connected to get that kind of permission to get up there. Definitely. And the foresight tool, I can tell you, to secure that kind of genetic diversity is ahead of its time. Yeah, and that's yeah. before the genetic diversity was even a thing yeah, back then. Right. And as you said, uh, we didn't realize that they brought um, the turtles before sexual maturity. So that even brings them having that first and second generation more impressive. And it also reminds me of you with the Cayman Pirates as well, because oh, yeah. we have been breaking milestones. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> yeah, because when he, when he mentioned that, you know, they were so ecstatic about seeing their, you know, getting those first eggs bred in captivity. When we, the Turtle Center, if people don't know, besides green conservation of green sea turtles we also work with our national birds uh, the grand cayman amazon parrot and the, the cayman brack amazon parrot and we've been breeding the grand cayman parrot since 2008 but just before covid hit we managed to get to breed the cayman brack parrots and we've been trying for a couple of years even though they look very similar and they're, they're very closely related, they're two different Yeah, two once you different see them beside each other, you can see the distinct different Yeah, you can see the difference, but they're also different sure. person- personalities. <laughs> I yeah. think that's the humans on the different islands as well, too. Yeah. And when we got those first black parrot, are different. We got those first <laughs> black parrot chicks, we were in the eggs, and wow, we were, we were pretty exotic, too. You know, so, yeah, as scientists and as, just as humans, you're just, it's just a, great to see those kind of achievements coming along. And, you know, we stand on the shoulders of giants because these guys were thinking way ahead of their time, you know, to get, to get us to where we are. So it came onto the center and, you know, from Maricultural Limited to came onto the farm, to came onto the center, to came onto the conservation education center. That's quite an evolution. And, you know, we, it's something, something that Caymanians should be proud of. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully this has given them some insights. So what does it, who else did we interview? Well, uh, we, to move it off of the scientific aspect, you know, we interviewed a variety of people from different departments. Obviously, it depends on how long you've been there, only true alumni. So our next interview is from Miss Corrine. And Miss Corrine works in our gift shop. So I'm going to let you guys listen to that and we'll be back. Okay, so I am here with Miss Corrine Evans Ebanks. Another one of our longtime crew members here at the Turtle Center. Good morning, Miss Corrine. Good morning, Wendy. All 
right. So if you don't mind, could you tell me a bit about yourself and when you first started at the center or then Turtle Farm? I started August 3rd, 1998. So I've been here like going almost 26 years, coming August 3rd this year. Um, I work in the retail store, Splash Gift Shop. Um, I first started as a sales assistant and now I uh, have been promoted for the last few years, can't recall how many years, <laughs> as a uh, um, head sales associate. All right. Awesome. Thank you for that. So you've been with us quite a while. Um, so from when Turtle Farm at the time was on the other side of the road, uh, could you tell me what it was like when you first started working there? When I started working at the Turtle Farm 25 years ago, um, it was smaller. We didn't have like the saltwater lagoon and the Avery and the freshwater lagoon. Um, we just had like just the turtle part of it that you could just see the turtles. We didn't have no swimming at the time either. Um, you could pick up the turtles and you could take pictures. And um, it was like 36 staff, I can recall. And we was uh, like family. But working at the uh, Turtle Center, now it's uh, been renamed for the last couple of years. Um, of course, the facility is much bigger but the extra activity that you can do here. Um, we have over 100 staff, I think, or maybe just 100 yeah, staff. Yeah, about 100 staff. Yeah, so it's more people that you have to work, uh, to us working here. So it's not quite how it used to be. Less people, more like family, everyone working together. All right, I understand what you're saying. The 36 people, I can't even imagine now because obviously I'm more of a newbie. I've only been on the past five years or so. So I'm used to the staff size of 100. So yeah, much more feeling of um community and family back then compared to now. I can imagine so with 36 co-workers. Uh, how much of those co-workers are you still, do you still have at Turtle Center today? I think we have uh, about five of us that's still here that I started working with when I came here. Okay. So do you have any memorable experiences about the old turtle farm that you'd like to share? It can be more than one or just one that sticks out. Anything in particular? Well, um, let me see. Um, how they had the um, turtle lagoon that day you could walk down like steps and you could actually there was a glass that so you could see the uh bigger turtles like the uh in the breeding pond they that's what it's called but it's designed differently over here now at cayman turtle center okay yes i do remember that it's like you were walking down on the ground sort of to see the under part of the tanks mm -hmm. okay so what were tours like then then compared to then to now did you have buses full of people come in like how we have um now oh yes we definitely had um buses full of people um at the time we had i think more tours um come in because there was other tour companies that used to do uh tours here with us and i think one or two of the company no longer um exists okay well, you being with us 25 years, this year is actually the 20th year on, uh, anniversary of Hurricane Ivan coming up. Um, do you remember how old that was? For Ivan, I think that was actually my um, weekend off. I wasn't working with, um, at that time. Okay. I heard that, that it was... Um, really bad you see like a couple weeks ago we had like that northwester that came in right and it was between 10 to 15 foot seas i heard that with hurricane i when it was like probably about 24 foot seas that we had at that time wow yeah what a memorable um weekend that was that even if you had the days off you remember definitely remember where you were um when that happened all right, Ms. Corrine, so over your 25 years, um, what do you personally think is one of the biggest differences or changes you've seen um, from CTF to CTC today? 
well like i said before it's uh much bigger so we have like the avery with the different birds and also the saltwater lagoon with tropical fish and the turtles that you can swim with and the freshwater lagoon that has a slide i think we have the biggest um pool in grand cayman yeah we do we do yeah okay and aside from the physical features of the park is there any other differences you'd say you've noticed i would say that the uh gift shop is uh much bigger um i love uh working in the gift shop and um, i've always worked uh, in the tourism field uh over 30 years um been through different um managers working my time here at cayman turtle center all right and the gift shop for those of you who don't know is always full of a lot of amazing items i'm not just being biased i didn't realize it until i started working there but i love the splash gift shop and i'm definitely one of their biggest vendors at the company and miss corinne is always there to ring me up and definitely she's always pointing out new items to me and keeps me pulling me back in for more so if you guys do visit the uh, Cayman Turtle Center, be sure to say hi to Miss Corrine in the gift shop. Miss Corrine, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Wendy, for having me. All right. So we'll get back after these few messages and we'll talk some more with other longtime staff members of Turtle Farm Pass and CTC's future. Green sea turtle nesting season's approaching. Here's a few tips to keeping our friends safe. Turn off, redirect, or shield any lights that can be seen from the beach. Remove obstacles and litter from the beach. No bonfires on the beach and remain quiet and distant if you see a nesting turtle. This message from the Cayman Turtle Center. Welcome back, listeners. You're tuned into the Green Scene brought to you by the Cayman Turtle Center. And this is Wendy Dandy speaking with you, one of the Education Programs Officer. And I'm joined with Mr. Geddes Hislop as well. So if you've been listening to us earlier, you'll know that this episode is about CTC past and present. And during the course of, the, of this episode so far, we've been speaking to long existing crew members um, that's been there since my culture limited and turtle farm and we've learned a lot of interesting stuff over the past almost an hour and right before break um, our last interview was miss was with miss corrine evans ebanks um, from the gift shop so get it so she also miss corrine she was there from 1998 i believe she said yeah she said she's going on 26 years yeah she had been there for a long haul so she's seen different managers and employees come and go and she's, she's still there. Yeah. yeah. And um, one of the favorite things she said to me um, when I spoke about the differences, what differences she sees between then and now, I loved what she said about the staff. Um, when she said it was a much smaller staff of 36, so she felt it was a much more tight-knit family oriented, yeah. orientated workplace. Mm -hmm. um, that was quite nice to hear. Compared yeah. to now, we have, you know, well over 100, and it seems like a lot of villages underneath one roof. That's what I like to call it. Oh, that's a good way to put it, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, with so many departments, as we've talked about in past episodes. Yeah, well, still, you still work as a unit, just that, you know, like you said, a it's, big it's, unit. it's a big unit. <laughs> and some people can't even, like, some people I recognize them, but I, I'm yeah. ashamed to say I can't even remember the, the names, because there's so many of them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's definitely... It's definitely grown from from back then to now, and it's good to hear these perspectives from all these different people. You know, we, mm -hmm. the early ones we heard were from from Benny Ebanks and Mr. Joe Parsons. Those mm -hmm. are really interesting stories. You get a different perspective from Miss Corrine. You know, she, you know, she and well, I don't know who else do we have. All right, so we have our last interview for the show, and this is from Mr. Mac Anglin. And Mr. Mac Anglin um, has been with the center multiple years as well. Also one of my favorite co-workers. <laughs> um, so here we go, guys. I will line up this interview and I hope you guys enjoy listening. All right, guys. So I am here with Mr. Mac Anglin. Good morning, Mr. Mac. Good morning, Mr. Wendy. Okay. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your very busy schedule to join us. So as you know, this episode is about Turtle Center, Turtle Farm Past. So we're speaking to our most seasoned co-workers and staff members, and you are definitely high on that list for us. <laughs> so if you don't mind giving us a little intro to yourself, 
around when you started, how long you were there from, I believe you're original from before Turtle Farm. So you can tell us what it was called before that and also what you do. Ms. Wende, I started working for uh, Turtle Farm, but at that time it was called Marble Culture from way up in um, Salt Creek. Creek. Okay. And after that, then it was moved down to Wixville here on the Iron Shore in the Bay. This is my fourth time working at the Turtle Center. I can't remember exactly the year I started, but I know it was up in, uh, in it was when you was up in Salt Creek. Okay, so you're talking about the late 60s, early 70s. Yes, okay. yes. And um, I would work there and then I'd go back to sea, come back home, go back to work for Marvel Culture again. And um, I've been here now 28 years gone. Okay. That is 28 recorded years. All of those years up at Mar up at Mar Culture. Mm -hmm. I don't have any official record of that. Oh, wow. Okay. So you're definitely a seasoned vet. So could you tell us what you do? Yes, I am the head butcher at um, the Turtle Center. And I've been here, like I just said, for 28 and a half years. And I enjoy what I do. I have trained a lot of the guys that someday they'll take over from me and keep this place going. Okay, well, if you said you've been here four times, that means you left and came back out of retirement four times. So that means you must enjoy what you do. Well, yes. I, I said to myself, when I was offered a, a job here 28 and a half years ago, I said to myself, I am going to stay this time. <laughs> <laughs> and we're glad you did. Mr. Mack is such a blessing to have at the center and definitely keeps the, uh, the cogs turning at the center and keeping a smooth sailing ship. So when you first started working, well, I'll ask you both because I think you're the first crew member I've talked to that was at Mara Culture as well as Turtle Farm. Yes. So what was it like when you first started? I'll start with Mara Culture. What was that like? We, we was working up in Salt Creek, like I say. Like I said before, we had to go to uh, up in the the sound up, up around Uncle Bob Bike there. It was called that those days, and dig the turtle grass to come back and feed the younger turtle over at uh, Salt Creek. Oh wow, that's really labor intensive. That's before we had our formulated pellets. Yes, 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 but. Uh, Many times, if you wasn't careful, you would get stung real bad because among that turtle grass, mm -hmm. it's a lot of little um, little insect in there that that will right little sting. hydroids and stuff. Yes, that sting. Yeah, the sting. So we had to be very very careful. But being the old the old ruffians than that we were, <laughs> maybe. iron men in wooden ships. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. We didn't make that deter us from doing our job. And uh, hopefully when I leave that uh, the guys that I have took and tried to train them. Mm -hmm. Will retain. <laughs> if they do what I tell them, what I showed them, mm -hmm. this place will still prosper very good. Um, okay. So, well, I definitely believe in that as I've seen that firsthand. <laughs> you have a lot of amazing or a few amazing protégés at the center. So what else? Is there any other memorable moments at Mara Culture Limited? Uh, collecting seagrass. I did not know that. That is very interesting. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, that's what the turtle was fed on those days. They might have had a little, a, a, a few sacks of, of the, um, or the imported one from the United States of right. America. But they much preferred the grass. Yes, because that's all the world. That's all that wild turtle. No, well, no, they, you know, they, right. they got a little small fish too, but mm -hmm. their, their mean food is turtle grass. Right. So, so we had to do that uh, almost on a daily basis. Okay. Not quite 
Because they're, they're like anything else, they're like any other animal. Some day they eat more, and some day they eat a little less. Okay. So when we see it getting a little low, mm -hmm. then we would go and get a, take the little skiff with a little outboard engine. Mr. Jim Daly, he was the general manager of that time. Okay. And uh, it was good working with him. I lost him for many, many years until <laughs> I ran into him on Seven Mile Beach some years ago. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> but he's, he still remembered me. Oh, that, well, I would hope so. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, he still remembered me. But he was our uh, manager up there. Well, that is a wealth of information, Mr. Mack. Um, much well, appreciated. There's more than that, you know. I'm sure there's a ton more. <laughs> yeah. We need to get you for a full radio show. It's what we need to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... I guess as compressed as you can, all you have all the meat of the issues. <laughs> I mm. feel so bad we're compressing you. But memorable experiences, what would you say? And this is talking from either Myra Culture Limited or Cayman Turtle Farm. My most memorable experience here would have been when Hurricane Michelle destroyed the farm. Wow, okay. I still hear past crew members talking about that. I'll never forget that day. I was home. But we didn't have any, any warning there was going to be a hurricane. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? And, oh, but I didn't get it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm not a person that really listens to the radio <laughs> all the time. Okay. But I didn't get any, any warning that it was going to be a hurricane. Mm -hmm. But I was lying down at home and I knew it was really, really rough on this side. So I said, well, let me check in with the farm and see what is happening down there. And when I called the manager wife, she told me, she said, say the farm is being destroyed. I said, okay. what? She said, yes. So I got on my bicycle and I came down here. And when I got here, it was bad. Oh man. You had those waves washing over that iron shore washing those huge turtles out of the holding the, the breeding wow pond. and those guys are 300 to 500 pounds the, 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 the same breeders farm yeah that you see the the dolphins using now right that was the, the breeder pond at that time okay so where this dolphin discovery is that area they use their enclosure that was the original breeder pond yes okay and That's what I remember as a child as well. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so powerful that it was washing turtles out of that like nothing. Wow. We, we started then to try to uh, save as many turtles as we possibly could. And up on this side here where you see all of those new ponds that was constructed after Hurricane Michelle. Mm -hmm. We had that whole place up there covered with turtle, lined it off. Wow. So we, I don't remember if there was a an accurate count, which I know it was, mm -hmm. but I don't remember the count right. that we had saved. And we, we, we took them, we put them into Ernest Jackson. Yeah, because I believe you guys, from the stories I've heard, had the public help it and stuff as well too. Uh, like they came, the public was crossing and helping as well. Oh yes, yeah. yes, yes! Everybody was Good old West was down there, <laughs> trying trying to say what we could of the tur of the turtles and all that. Yeah, good came and kind. Okay. Yeah, yes, yes. So we so we said what we could and took them up to Ernest Jackson. Now Ernest Jackson now would be the CEO of the Turtle Center now, grandfather. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He he had dug a huge uh, hole that he was um, selling marl from, mm -hmm. and that certainly came in good. Wow. <laughs> because we could put them then in the into Ernest Jackson Pond, we called right. it. But it's a good thing that we had it because we saved an enormous amount of turtle from there. Wow. But then all of the the pumps they had there. Mm -hmm were destroyed. We had to install new pumps after that. Wow. But that was an experience that I'll never forget. 
explain, uh, explain it mm -hmm. in a snapshot. Yeah. Not really get into <laughs> the fire. details of yeah. oh, what a crazy day it was and yes. follow a couple yes. of following crazy days. Yes. Wow. All right, Mr. Mack, thank you for that insight. All right, so another interesting interview from a long-standing um, staff member uh, who's been in and out of retirement four times. Four times, wow. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're running short on time, so we'll have to wrap up the show. But before we go, a few daily announcements. Um, for those of you who would like to come to the Turtle Center, we'd just like to remind the public of what we have going on each week. So our shark talks and shark feedings are Monday to Friday, shark talks at 10.30 a.m. and the feeding at 11 a.m. respectively. Come and meet the birds in the aviary and make a small donation to turtle conservation and have lots of fun hand feeding the colorful birds. We also have our grill and chill Saturdays every Saturday, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Dive into a poolside barbecue with a live DJ, soak up the sun and treat yourself to a daiquiri and a bear bucket specials. Simply play general admission for pool access and relish the DJ tunes while savoring delicious barbecue delights. It's a perfect weekend retreat. Next up, turtle nesting season is here early, again this year. We already have our first two boxes of eggs in the hatchery, and our turtle hatchlings will soon follow in the next couple of months. It takes probably about two months, 60 days or so, we'll start getting some activity. So you wanna keep an eye out for that and come and see our 2024 new generation. Uh, starting next week, Monday the 26th, we'll be doing our, our breeder pond roundup for about two weeks. And what that is, is every year our internal vet and the rest of our team, we gather up all of the breeders, the giant turtles in that front um, exhibit, and we pull them out one by one to give them their yearly medications, check up, and also measurements. So the public can view that while we do that, one of my favorite times of years. Next up, we have the Turtle Crawl 5K Run, which will be on Sunday, the 17th of March, starting at 6.30 a.m. It's a $25 registration, which includes a t-shirt. Get fit with prizes and surprises and support turtle conservation. For more information of these and other happenings at the Cayman Turtle Center, visit our website at www.turtle.ky or visit Cayman Turtle Center social media platforms on Facebook and Instagram. Here's a tip for our locals, get yourself an annual pass and enjoy unlimited access to the center all year round. Cause who doesn't like going to the Turtle Center, especially if you have kids. You can also email us at info, that's I-N-F-O at turtle.ky, uh, turtle.ky, I'm sorry, for any questions or comments on the show. If you'd like to hear today's episode again or any other Green Seed episodes you may have missed, you can find them on Cayman Turtle Center's YouTube channel. Thank you guys for tuning in again with us this Saturday. Join us on the green scene again next week, Saturday at 11 a.m. right here on Bobo 89.1 FM. And remember, you can help with our sea turtles and Cayman's environment by picking up three pieces of plastic a day. Come on, guys, we can do it. Even the smallest piece of plastic can make all the difference with saving a marine animal's life. Thank you for listening to us, Cayman, and have a lovely Saturday. We'll see you next week.